my theory is women in their 40s need to know about perimenopause and perimenopause is menopause's dastardly little sister. Okay, it moves by stealth. You don't know it's coming because you've still got your periods or even if they're erratic, you, you still think everything's normal, but your hormones are on a huge roller coaster. <laughs> Why do you believe there is such a stigma around menopause? I think there's been a huge silence around menopause and it needs to become a cacophony and then a symphony, you know, as we all talk about it at once. I think it was so inextricably linked with aging and being kind of on the shelf and no longer being fertile and being old and grumpy and witchy and crony and all those other horrible things. Um, and now that women are being absolutely honest about it, and now that women know there is largely a solution if they have problems with the menopause, which is the good new body identical HRT, which is incredibly safe. And now that we can have our own hormones back, the idea that we have to suffer and we have to hide that suffering, I think is just over. How can businesses and organizations better support their employees experiencing menopause? Uh, I think this is a huge issue for businesses. And we did a survey when I did the Channel 4 documentary with Davina McCall, which showed that one in 10 women were leaving work due to menopause. Now that's massive, that's decimation of your workforce. And if you think about it, say in the NHS, 50% of nurses are over 50 and a third of them want to leave their jobs. And you think about a 50 year old nurse and a 22 year old nurse and the experience that 50 year old nurse has in handling emergencies and empathy and you know dealing with ridiculous people and you know you cannot kind of buy that kind of experience back and so I think it's incredibly important for retention of these kind of wise experienced you know smart women that, that we do uh, pay attention to menopause and I think a lot of people have jumped on this bandwagon and chucked a menopause policy into their website and then put out a press release saying we have a menopause mm -hmm. policy and we're making adjustments for women and then the women are still afraid to come and talk to people to come and talk to their male and female managers you know younger female managers don't necessarily know about it and so you absolutely need to open the conversation and you need to kind of have everybody get in a room men and women and often women on their own too and have a conversation with the doctor or have a conversation with a menopause expert and really go into groups and, and play with the subject and, and kind of let it all out and not feel that the workplace is not a place where this should be discussed and it's something about home and private because menopause is very much about your brain and how your brain changes and you're using your brain at work and you know you get brain fog or memory loss mm -hmm. and that's 73 percent of women according to our poll are suffering from brain fog that really matters for your confidence at work. You're standing doing a PowerPoint and suddenly you go, and his name was mm. <laughs> that horrible, horrible pause. Mm -hmm. And it's so important that we do deal with that and that we open this conversation to men and to women and you know to non-binary and trans people as well. Mm -hmm. But we, we make it a wide, wide, wide confident conversation. And also once you've sorted it, you know, everything's better. It's not like it's a big bad thing it's immediately there is action you can take and there are successful solutions how can advocates ensure that their menopause activism is inclusive well i was worried when i got involved in the menopause charity and these menopause campaigns that we would end up with the hashtag menopause so white mm -hmm. because obviously at first it was a white middle class sort of movement and often the people going to private doctors or getting informed were you know people who had a bit more money and what has happened because the menopause movement is just in its kind of babyhood really um, it has tried immediately to be much more inclusive from the start so we have people like Karen Arthur who is uh, the creator of Menopause Whilst Black Instagram and was in uh, the first Davina McCall film I made. And she has become this amazing menopause advocate. And there's very, very little research into black women. Um, and the research is coming out of America. So it's African-American women. It's not necessarily the same for women here. And it's, it's just not very good. And she is campaigning for more research. 
But one of the things we sort of know is that black women and, and Asian women tend to come into menopause two years earlier. Mm. And whether that is because of allostatic stress, racial weathering, tough lives, and also women who are in worse economic situations tend to get menopause earlier. So we really, really need to be looking after that, looking into that. And one of the things the menopause charity is trying to do is to create menopause champions who will go into communities and say, Urdu or Punjabi speaking communities and um, actually, you know, learn about the menopause from an expert or from a doctor and then go in there with their learning to talk within that culture. And that is one of the things we we're trying to raise money for. And we've got a pilot scheme of menopause champions going into groups of refugees and speaking their language. Uh, so if we can do that for those communities, then of all the people who you know need help, it's the people, you know, having the toughest time who can't sit around just you know doing yoga all day and you know fixing their hair. You know, you really, really need hardworking mums need help, and so it really is. You know, and often HRT can be a huge step forward uh, to making the rest of your life easier and giving you more time because it settles your hormones, and then you can look around at what's going on around you and and you know help out or whatever mm -hmm. so that's incredibly important and particularly for asian women uh south asian women in britain are much much more likely to get osteoporosis than white women or black women and there are these important differences and you know we should be talking to people about bone strength mm -hmm. what they can do about it vitamin d calcium all these things but also that HRT is an option and it can increase your bone density by 3% a year. And that's really worth knowing. And I don't think most women know that. And, you know, the idea that we will be able to throw away a lot of simmer frames when we're 80 and not just sit there accepting, you know, being bent old ladies, it's kind of so important for our big health picture. So, yes, we need much, much more research into all different groups around the menopause. What is your message for people who are about to go through menopause and who may not know what to expect? Well, my theory is women in their 40s need to know about perimenopause. And perimenopause is menopause's dastardly little sister. OK, it moves by stealth. You don't know it's coming because you've still got your periods or even if they're erratic, you, you still think everything's normal. But your hormones are on a huge roller coaster when they're going up and down and up and down. Your progesterone is going down. And your estrogen is zigzagging up and down. So some people experience these kind of incredible sexual sur surges and then sudden depression. And it is a nightmare. And it doesn't happen to everybody, but it happens to And what, what we now know, because we did this huge poll of 4,000 women, is that we polled people between 45 and 55. So about half of them were in the average time for peri perimenopause before 50. And they were suffering from 69% had sleeplessness. Uh, sorry, 16, I'll say that again. So mm -hmm. we did this poll of 4,000 women and lots of them were in the perimenopausal bracket between about 45 and 51. And what we found was 69% were suffering from anxiety and depression, 84% from lack of sleep. Um, and, you know, 70% had hot flushes. So even in that period, you know, hot flushes are coming even before your menopausal and those mental health changes are really serious. So the 73% that suffer memory problems and brain fog are in that kind of perimenopausal as well as menopausal period. So in your 40s, you're thinking, oh, I'm multitasking, I'm doing a job, I've got kids, I've got aging parents and, you know, and I'm running a marathon. And, you know, I'm doing all these things. And in fact, um, you're going bonkers and you can't multitask anymore. And you blame it on yourself and you blame it on the amount of stuff landing on you. And actually what is happening, one of the things is that your hormones are just all over the shop. And there's almost nothing you can do about that until you can sort of work out where you are. And then maybe if your symptoms are telling you this is bad, then your symptoms are telling you you could get hormone replacement therapy. And it's just better to know what's happening in your brain. And that's one of the things I'm trying to teach people from the research I've done into the menopausal brain. It really, really helps to know why things are going wrong and why things are difficult and why you're anxious. And then maybe you can meditate or you can change your diet. There's other things you can do at the beginning of perimenopause, which don't necessarily involve HRT, 
but just armed with knowledge is what matters here.